Okay, children, the last chapter, and it's going to be a bit long because we will learn all the interesting things about the present climate as much as we can and the future. There are tremendous details, tremendous details. We have already said many times we've been increasing greenhouse gases since the Industrial Revolution, maybe even starting uh, 10,000 years ago when the last ice age disappeared and we started doing agriculture instead of wandering around being hunter-gatherers. And as we started doing agriculture, we settled down and women were moving less and they were having more babies. The population started to grow and then we wanted more food so we wanted more agricultural land and we started clearing forests and making more agricultural land more food production and then we got richer and we started wandering around and we built cities and we conquered other places when we had too much resources or too much food and big military and then uh, sometimes when we didn't have enough food we went elsewhere looking for food and invaded other places which had food so you can imagine societies got complex and population kept growing militaries came then the governments came and the governments became more complicated and sophisticated with the finance minister and the defense minister and kings were still around right it was all princes and kings and queens and so on and yet you had some tribal existence tribal leaders you know nobody selected them nobody elected them so they just somehow got into power maybe a strong man who was good at hunting became the tribal leader and so on and so forth and then came the industrial revolution slowly we began to invent things the microscope and the telescope and then came the steam engine and then things started rolling and there's lots of theories as to why industrial revolution happened somewhere and not elsewhere what were the countries doing before that which was a rich country which was a poor country how the wealth shifted how colonization happened and so on and so forth with all that in mind let's just focus on what happened since industrial revolution we already said the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere went from just being around 280 parts per million by volume or 280 ppm to now over 425 uh, ppm somewhere around 427 ppm so not only are we increasing co2 in the atmosphere but we are increasing it more and more per year so you are accelerating the increase and we are increasing other greenhouse gases artificially produced you know refrigerants as we call them the refrigerator in your house you may not have one but you may have heard of it has some coolant in it to take the air and uh, cool the air inside and take out the heat and so on and so forth it needs a coolant and being very brief but you can read up more if you're old enough but those refrigerants leak and they are also strong greenhouse gases remember we have to worry about the concentration like 427 ppm of carbon dioxide we have to worry about how long the gas will last will last in the atmosphere once we put it out we said CO2 can last for many centuries which is bad and we have to worry about how good it is at blocking the thermal radiation going out to space and make the climate warmer it's like how effective is the blanket how warm is it going to make so CO2 is considered level one methane that we talked about if you know chemistry it's CH4 is 25 times as powerful a blanket as CO2 but CO2 lasts for multiple centuries and methane lasts only for about 10 years because it's very reactive and so on so you have to worry about how long they last how high is the concentration and how powerful a blanket uh, they are but another key thing you must have figured out by now if CO2 can last for multiple centuries that means the CO2 that we started emitting in uh, at the beginning of the industrial revolution is still hanging around 
so co2 is getting added and added and added to the atmosphere and it is going into the ocean it is going into vegetation and so on and so forth so there is accumulation of co2 in the atmosphere because it doesn't go away so remember we talked about the storage tank and the flux so the flux is the amount of CO2 we are putting into the atmosphere every year by burning fossil fuels, by building cities, by cutting forests and so on and so forth. And temperature is getting warmer, rain is getting crazier and the heat waves are increasing and so on in some places. But CO2 is accumulating and it turns out kids that the warming that we see is quite similar to the increase in accumulated CO2 in the atmosphere. So we can see who has been emitting CO2 from the industrial revolution, the rich countries like the US and Europe and Australia and so on. More recently we have other countries like China and India wanting to grow economically and become rich like the rich countries and they are also emitting more and more and more. So we are now all in this together but you have to remember it's not just CO2 concentration in the atmosphere but how much is already built up from the industrial revolution and how do we measure that not in ppm because it's not a concentration it's the amount so it is something like a gigaton CO2 so typically it's almost you know the amount of CO2 is approximately double the number uh, in terms of just number if it's 447 ppm concentration then the total amount is about 800 to 900 gigatons of CO2 in the atmosphere that's just a way to remember so have accumulated so much CO2 and if the warming is proportional or related to the accumulated CO2 then we know that every ton of CO2 we add is going to add to the warming and every ton of CO2 we remove is going to st start reducing the warming and because CO2 lasts so long in the atmosphere it will take time to take it down so even if we magically stopped putting more CO2 into the atmosphere the CO2 have accumulated so far from the industrial revolution will continue the warming for some time right so these are the kind of details we have to worry about so this is then the last chapter chapter 13 the present and the future of climate by the end of this century so we are already talking about future climate so I'll come back in the next podcast and explain again a little bit more details about uh, in a little bit more detail about how we estimate the future of our climate so by the end of this century oceans could be significantly warmer we always say could be as we said in the last section last chapter because this is an estimate underwater habitats could be in even greater danger because the oceans are warming they are getting acidified oxygen is reducing sea level is rising corals may go underwater and so on but what if emissions are greatly reduced by let's say some great invention you made or something old people like me do before I go boom right so even then sea levels would still rise for a foot or two because the accumulated carbon since industrial revolution will continue to warm glaciers will begin to uh, continue to melt and keep adding water to the oceans what if emissions aren't curbed good god that's going to create sea levels to go up more than six feet could go up more than six feet again some uncertainty there but it's an estimate again you have to think of the risk do you want to worry about how accurate this estimate is or do you want to say oh my god that sounds scary we must do something about it because it's a risk right but even with the lowest rise regular tides could become more like king tides those are the highest of high tides you know you have high tide and low tide and depending on the high tide comes and the sea level rise the highest of the high tide may become higher and higher and this happens in Venice and in many low-lying regions already 
right in florida steps are being taken to control flooding because florida is at sea level and miami is a rich city and people want to move to florida tropical climate and so on roads are being raised above sea level shopping malls are being built with the protective barriers right think about uh, yourself being an engineer and wanting to build a sea level barrier for your community or town or village or whatever on the coast let's say what are you going to worry about are you going to really worry about whether the sea level will rise by one foot or two foot two feet in the future by 2100 when you will be nice and old like me or will you worry about how much it will cost so these issues are a bit complicated but you just learn to think about the risk that is coming and how we estimate it and what we think we can do about it and how much it will cost so we have to do everything we have to start reducing emissions which we have not been good at you know increasing solar energy wind energy and so on and we have to consume less which means we have to use less energy waste less energy eat less meat and so on I won't go into the details because there are cultural issues and we are so used to living well and recording things watching things storing things driving around flying around and everything we do is carbon right so if energy becomes carbon free then we will begin to reduce emissions significantly but still we will need more electric cars we will need efficient washing machine you know everything car has to be efficient if it's still running on fossil fuels and so on and so forth so we'll come back in the next podcast to we'll look at how it is that we are estimating or projecting it's called pro when we make predictions it's for the next few days or few seasons maybe 10 years when we go into the future we have to make many estimates of how population will change how energy systems will change how cars will become efficient and so on and so forth so that's what we will talk about in the next podcast see you